Welcome to another exciting episode of We Heart Therapy. You're watching your guide to therapy and coaching, and I'm your host, Annabelle Bugatti. Today we're talking about an exciting topic, and that's when it comes to working with Department of Family Services, or CPS. And as you may know, that there are a lot of therapists who help out with those cases. And so today we have a special guest. Her name is Monique, and she's a clinical professional counselor here in Las Vegas, Nevada. She also specializes in addictions, and she's agreed to speak with us today about working with Department of Family Services. Thank you so much for being on our show. Thank you. So can you talk to our viewers a little bit about, you know, what is the acronym DFS and CPS, and under what sort of circumstances would somebody come to be involved with them? Okay, DFS is Department of Family Services and CPS is Child Protective Services. And for me personally, I've, um, as a therapist, I was employed by several agencies that do, do foster care work. Mm -hmm. So children who have been removed from their household for whatever reason, either a domestic violence issue, um, child neglect, uh, addiction issues. And I found myself working with children who are under a lot of stress um, from being removed from their home, uh, the trauma of whatever it took to get there, and then learning to adapt to a new home situation, usually in foster care. So when um, a family has to work with DFS or CPS, who are all the players usually involved? So actually, it's, it's kind of an odd setup. The legal guardian becomes the Department of Family Services, which would be their caseworker. So the caseworker manages the case and they um, evaluate the situation to determine what needs to happen for reunification. So the plan is always to reunify the children back home. So generally that would mean that parents need to um, fulfill whatever um, the court has ordered them to fulfill to um, receive their children back. So they usually have case plans and uh, various standards that they have to meet. So it would be counseling or mm -hmm. um, whatever it is that the court determines they need to do to receive their rights to have their children again. So the case manager manages that. Um, from a clinical perspective, we um, are asked to evaluate the children and their needs, determine if there's trauma, um, and help to um, you know, resolve some of the trauma issues and adapt to the new home and kind of have a as smooth of a transition as possible both into foster care and out of foster care. Um, usually we're asked to also help with reunification mm -hmm. if that means doing therapy with the family, siblings, um, and kind of continuing to, to help manage the case once the kids are reunified. And what's a PSR worker? PSR worker is uh, a bachelor's level position where um, the it's called PSR is called psychosocial rehab. So a lot of times, you know, as a therapist, I may see a child one hour a week. Um, so there's a lot of work that needs to be done if it's behavioral training or you know working on managing emotions, moods, boundaries, that kind of thing. So PSR is used as an intermediate between therapy. Uh, and BST to kind of help um, establish case planning and do um, you know more hands-on work with teaching boundaries and communication skills and things like that. And BST is basic skills training? It, it is basic skills training and what that would be usually foster parents handle basic skills training so what they're trying to do is teach the children uh, to man manage basic s skills which would be homework it could be something like grooming and scheduling, preparing mm -hmm. for their day, you know, making lunches, you know, doing all of the basic skills that they need to do to be able to manage daily life. So it sounds like when they come into contact with uh, Department of Family Services or CPS, they'll have a caseworker at uh, Department of Family Services and then they'll work with um, a therapist who may work for an agency that they're assigned to mm -hmm. and as in addition to working with a therapist who will evaluate them it sounds like they'll also may be assigned a PSR worker who is not a licensed therapist they Correct. are a bachelor's level trained person who sort of helps maybe um, do some work in between the therapy sessions and be an intermediary between them and the caseworker and help 
the client in between therapy sessions, right. you know, sort of reinforce the stuff that they're supposed to be working on right. and Im encouraging that. Implementing goals, um, kind of having more tangible means for mm -hmm. um, various goals. Um, th therapy should drive the case plan for PSR mm -hmm. and BST. Mm -hmm. so the way it's supposed to work is that the three work together mm -hmm. with a the therapist managing the care and, mm -hmm. and kind of getting a feel for how are they doing, mm -hmm. you know, on whatever goal it is that's been set. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so is there anything that families should know um, going into this if they just had a case come up and they're not sure about the process? Is there anything that you think that they should know that maybe most people are really underprepared for? Well, I think the fear is, for many people getting involved with DFS or CPS, is the fear is that they're going to lose all rights to their children, and that's not necessarily the case. The state really wants to reunif reunify families and keep kids out of foster care as long as possible. So for many parents who may find themselves in a very difficult situation where their children have been removed, they just need to communicate with a caseworker and get a feel for what needs to be done and just get down to it. Um, in my experience, uh, Department of Family Services is really not unreasonable and they work really hard to enable um, parents and children's ch children to reunify. So it's nice that the state offers a lot of services to help mm -hmm. everybody emotionally get through all that. So, um, you know, always working under the understanding that reunification is goal number one. Yeah, so so families should really know that going into this that the state doesn't necessarily want to keep yeah. families apart. Their primor primary goal is to have reunification take place. So yes. Now can um, folks pick out the agency that they'd like to work with if they know of one in particular and they've just had a case come up? Um, I, I don't know if um, that's always the case. I think that for the most part, the caseworker, the, the Department of Family Services representative mm -hmm. is really helpful with finding agencies to help mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I'm sure someone can come in and ask for specific services as long mm -hmm. as there's a relationship that, mm -hmm. that can be established or some sort of open communication between DFS and whatever agencies. Mm -hmm. I've seen them be very patient and kind of you know, helpful in either finding services or being um, helpful with services that are already existing. Excellent. So you work here in Las Vegas and you mm -hmm. work with agencies and you also do private practice as mm -hmm. well. So if any of our viewers would, are in Las Vegas and they'd like to work with you, how can they find you? Well, I have a, a website. It's Maricomo uh, Counseling, which is translated into English as um, Calm Waters Counseling. Um, and you can find me on Facebook and also cell phone. Mm -hmm. um, I do really all of my business work out of my cell phone. Okay, perfect. And we're gonna put, her information should run across the screen, and we're also gonna put a link to her website in the description for this video. Thank you again so much for being a part of our series. Thank you for having me. Thank you again for watching, and if you like what you see here today, make sure that you hit subscribe, and don't go anywhere because more episodes are on the way.